Portia at Le Mans has always been in another world. For 19 times in the past, Portia has made those victories at Le Mans since 1970, the most undefeated automaker in the endurance racing world in history. In honor of the 75th anniversary in 2023 and 60 years of the 911 sports car, many 911 race cars have been very successful in sports car racing, dating back to 1973. The main spotlight in this video is the Porsche 911 GT198, the last 911 to deliver Porsche an outright victory at the 24 Hours of Le Mans 25 years ago. To this day, the GT198 remains the ultimate 911 purpose-built prototype to dominate Le Mans. Today, Porsche still competes in top-level endurance racing, adding more dominant victories and is on a mission to clinch its 20th victory at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's hard to believe that a quarter of a century ago, the GT198 returned Porsche to the top of the grid in endurance racing. Looking at this 25-year-old machine, she aged beautifully like fine wine from an era as far as look and sound. The 911 GT1 inherits the DNA from its Group C predecessors, the Porsche 956 and 962. Group C was in an endurance racing era where Porsche peaked its domination in the 1980s, winning six straight times at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. By the early 1990s and the demise of Group C, the Porsche works team dropped from top-level endurance racing. Later, Johan Dauer granted Porsche permission to enter the 962 LMs under his name with factory support from Porsche. This Dauer 962 car outright won the 1994 24 Hours of Le Mans, giving Porsche its 13 Le Mans win. With the revival of global sports car racing into the BPR Global GT Series, which preceded the FIA GT Championship, Porsche returned to top-level sports car racing in 1996 to fight McLaren. The McLaren F1 GTR was the first to take advantage of the series rules and was unbeatable, winning the 1995 Le Mans race and a two-time champion in the BPR GT Series. This made Porsche enter the GT1 category to build a new race car called the 911 GT1 sharing the car lights of the 993 Gen 911 streetcar. Its rear subframe and the flat 6 engine are derived from the Group C 962. The 911 GT1 created a trilogy evolution in over three years, thanks to Norbert Sanger, the legendary father of Porsche Motorsport, who designed the 911 GT1 and Group C of the 956 and 962 cars. When the first 911 GT1 debuted at Le Mans 24 hours in 1996, the factory Porsche team proved that their GT1 prototype was fast and competitive up against the F1 GTR, Ferrari F40, Lister Storm, Dodge Viper, Toyota Supra, and the Nissan Skyline GTR. While most manufacturers raced production cars that turned into track cars, Porsche went for race car first and production car second, raising the price cost. The factory 911 GT1s took second and third place overall at Le Mans in victory in the GT1 class, just one lap down from the overall winner prototype TWR Yoast Porsche. Not a factory car effort, yet was improved by Porsche using their mastery and their long-running engines. After Le Mans, the 911 GT1 went on to win the final three BPR GT races in the season. The FIA GT Championship was launched in 1997 and became golden with entries of McLaren, Mercedes-AMG, Panos, Lotus, and Porsche to battle it out on the tracks. In response, Porsche launched a faster, better aerodynamic 911 GT1 which added evolution suffix. When it came down to performance figures, the car retained the same engine as the 1996 car. The visual changes were the new 911 996 style lights, while the car's aerodynamics and suspension were enhanced further. But when the 1997 season began, the car struggled to match the pace of the AMG Mercedes and Snitzer BMW McLarens. The 911 GT1 Evo was easily outgunned and stood no chance of victory against its fiercer competitors. Team Mercedes dominated the FIA GT Championship in 1997 and again in 1998. Team BMW McLaren was the second one to beat two, but at Le Mans in 1997, the 911 Evo had a very successful qualifying to start second place on the grid. 
However, in the actual 24-hour race, the two factory 911 GT1s were plagued with mechanical problems, resulting in both cars retiring from the race and allowing the McLaren F1 GTR long tail to succeed with the 1-2 victory in the GT1 class. The TWR Porsche once again took victory outright, giving Porsche its 15th Le Mans win. Before things turned up again in the future, Porsche had a very tough season with the 911 GT1 Evo because its steel chassis was heavier and less stiff than the carbon fiber McLarens and Mercedes. It meant that the steel chassis had been proven obsolete. After all, superiority answered when Porsche developed an all-new car from the ground up to take on the extreme opposition, the 911 GT1 98. 1998 would mark the 50th anniversary of the Porsche automaker. The company's mission is to earn a fat W in the 24 hours of Le Mans outright. The 911 GT198 was the final and most extreme version of the trilogy. It was the first Porsche race car with the carbon fiber monocoque chassis with carbon disc brakes. They've improved rigidity and reduced the weight by around 30%. The flowing bodywork resembled a sports car prototype rather than a road car turned into a track car. A 3.2 liter flat 6 engine with triple K turbochargers made it a new 6 speed sequential gearbox making 550 horsepower with aluminum block and cylinder heads and 4 valves. Another novelty is that the GT198 only weighed roughly 2,000 pounds. The car was ready to take on the 1998 newcomers entering Le Mans. Toyota GT1, Mercedes CLK LM, BMW V12 LM, and the Nissan R390. Despite AMG Mercedes winning every FIA GT race, Porsche was able to be more consistent with several podium finishes throughout the series in 1998. But it wasn't enough vengeance. However, the 1998 24 Hours of Le Mans was a different story. Porsche left no stone unreturned, digging for speed, pace, and reliability against one of the top challengers on the grid. Toyota, Mercedes, McLaren, Nissan, and BMW were all fighting for outright victory to stop Porsche. Despite strong engineering and factory drivers' efforts, the GT198 wasn't the fastest car on the grid. In qualifying, AMG Mercedes annihilated them by taking first and third place, split by Toyota in second. Porsche had to settle for P4 and P5, but the team didn't do well on losing and was very determined to win the race. The air restrictor rules constrained Porsche's turbocharged engines, but the team kept pushing anyway. The GT198 ran a low downforce setup, allowing it to reach over 200 miles per hour on the Monson Strait of Le Mans. Its rivals, the Toyota GT1, was the fastest car next to AMG Mercedes V8 powered cars. Porsche put in the work of consistency and effort to make minimum pit stops as possible. In the early stages of the race, Mercedes led the race for only a short period, and both CLK LMs would retire in the race with an engine failure. BMW retired 6 hours into the race due to mechanical and aerodynamic problems. That left Porsche, the only German factory to push, push, and push to the top of the grid. As they did into nighttime, the race turned into a German-Japanese fight between Porsche, Toyota, and Nissan. After 16 hours, Porsche still led first and second, but Toyota soon took the lead, making an incredible comeback during the last stages of the race after both Porsche GT1s faulted with mechanical problems. They spent 30 minutes in the pits for car repairs. Then Porsche got informed that the leading number 29 Toyota was hit with a gearbox problem, diminishing its victory chances with just 80 minutes left in the race. Because of that, the two 911 GT1s kept pushing and pressuring them to snatch back first and second place, sprinting to victory. Thanks to the great expertise of the Porsche team, both number 25 and number 26 cars had enough fuel and reliability to cross the finish line P1 and P2. The winning drivers were Lauren Aiello, Alan Magnish, and Stefan Ortelli. Porsche celebrated its 16 Le Mans victory on its 50th birthday in the best way possible. The 911 GT198 was the last homologated road car to win Le Mans outright. Since then, Purpose-built prototypes have been the new norm of winning Le Mans. 
which are more expensive than the production-based GT cars. After Le Mans, Porsche would race the GT198 for the last time at the inaugural Petit Le Mans 10-hour endurance race in the EMSA series. It was a car driven by Yannick Dalmas that lifted and backflipped before landing and smashing into the side barriers while leading the race. Yep, back in the late 90s, aerodynamic instability was no joke. Even though this wasn't how Porsche wanted to end the 911 GT1 racing program, the GT198 went out with a bang and now sits in Porsche's museum at Stuttgart, Germany. It's forever a legend, a conqueror, a work of art, timeless, ageless, and irreplaceable. Just 25 years later, this racing car still shines in our minds any day of the week, enough that most of us can remember its story. What a stunning race car for its age. If you did enjoy this video, you can get more by liking this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel for some more exciting content like this. If you're interested in endurance racing topics, you can check this video out right here about the Bentley Speed 8. 20 years ago, it triumphed the 24 hours of Le Mans. Thank you. Peace out, stay safe, Chris the Radar, out.